Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today we got some positive news as over 6 billion in Bitcoin options are set to expire today, which sets us up for a potential $80,000 Bitcoin. But I will just warn you that what goes up must come down and not every story tells the full tale. So we'll take a look at that. Also a nice little piece about Kim.com talking about Bitcoin Cash and Elon Musk comes out of nowhere and pretty much says, yeah, you're right. And we'll take a look at what that is and the details about what is going on and the love affair of Bitcoin Cash. And uh, speaking about what's going on, what the heck is going on with Voyager? One of my top picks has just been kind of uh, been trading sideways lately. And I'm going to tell you exactly what's going on and when I believe things are going to start to really pick up. So we'll take a look at all that. But there's a couple things I wanted to announce. First of all, we had talked about uh, we, we've been talking about N NFTs for a while here, and uh, I know people are in love with NFTs, and that's great. I like them too. I bought an NFT of Batman over on Viv. Great stuff, right? Great stuff. But uh, some people like real art on their wall that's actually you know physical. And uh, one of the uh, a local artists or a lo local company reached out to me from Chicago. Uh, there are subscribers. Uh, one of the, the guy that owns it. He says, "Hey man," he goes, "I I get these. I source these um, uh, artworks." from uh, people around the globe, different artists. And uh, what do you think about this? It's a nice acrylic uh, and they got a bunch of different ones. This is one of the ones that I liked. And uh, I just asked everybody like what they thought of this artwork. And a lot of people, I mean, myself included, I mean, I would definitely put that on my wall, uh, especially on one of my investment properties. And they're like, yeah, I love it. I would like to put that on my wall. So great. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do a giveaway. All you gotta do is just comment something about the painting or the artwork or something like that and then we'll reach out to you and we'll pick a winner and uh, that could be on your wall so if you like something like this uh, there's gonna be more where that came from we're gonna give uh, one of these away today so just comment in below and uh, that is it for that let's see what's going on into the market so first of all today it is uh, March 26th it is 2 30 p.m. Uh, Paso Texas time beautiful day beautiful day and uh, just so you know, this will be my last video uh, in El Paso for a while. We are taking off tomorrow morning for Puerto Rico, just to take a little bit of a break. And then uh, we're gonna meet up over there with uh, a couple of people. Alex is over there. I think Paper Hands Ryan is, is over there. So we might be doing like a, like a real uh, Trade the Chains show uh, over on Puerto Rico. I was just there for a vacation. I think these guys were there for business, but uh, whatever. So uh, yeah, we'll see, tell you how it all goes. But this is what's going on in the market today. First of all, yesterday when we talked about the market, how depressing was that, right? And I told you, if you're new to the market, don't worry, it's gonna be all right. Because uh, you have to understand that uh, these markets over here in the uh, cryptocurrency digital assets, 20% dips, 30% dips, it's just a Thursday, just a Tuesday, it doesn't really matter. Uh, over in traditional, traditional world, that's huge, but over here, it doesn't really mean anything. So uh, what happened today? Well, we just exactly what I told you was going to happen. If you don't like the price, just wait a little bit of time and it'll change. And that's exactly what happened. So again, these are going to happen again and again and again. So once you get used to it, especially if you're new, just understand that uh, these things are all, all normal. And I, I told you, you know, the great thing about not going all in, like you can, you can be like my man Diddy over at Bitcoin Family. Uh, great channel. Go check that out. I, I recommend it in the links in, or that is a uh, description. Uh, there's a link in the description, that's what I'm trying to say, of uh, Diddy and Guy and Hashoshi and Digital Dave and all the guys that I, I watch almost every day. So check him out. But like what he did was great. He went all in the very beginning of 2017. He sold his businesses, his houses, kidneys, whatever he sold. He sold everything and he put it all into Bitcoin and uh, worked out pretty well. But uh, you know, for some people, when they go all in, it's a little bit scary. So for me, I just said, this is the great thing about being an investor. Uh, you can just dollar cost average, you can value cost average, or you can just go all in. I personally like the dollar cost average because yesterday is a great day, right? If I would have gone in all in the day before, I couldn't have put a bunch of money in yesterday for all the things I like to buy. Like, you know, Voyager, Chainlink, Cardano, uh, what is the other one? StormX. Uh, those types of things, right? Those, those, those like little gems that you can pick up. So it's a great day. And then uh, what's great about you know the next day that comes up, well, you're like, oh, it's up. My portfolio is up. Everybody's happy. So just remember that uh, uh, these things are going to happen. So just keep your just keep your head and your shoulders and and don't freak out because uh, there's going to be a lot more of these. All right. So this is what's going on in the market today. Uh, we got a 1.7 trillion dollar market cap. 
let's see what we have as far as coins and how we're doing. Well, Bitcoin's up three, almost 4%, 54,000, especially with what we're going to talk about today. You'll understand why. Ethereum, not too great, 1669, but uh, still in that top two spot. So we're happy. Tether's Tether, Binance Coin's up. Listen, listen, everything's up. Let's see what is up and like huge, like bigly. Terra, uh, yes, Filecoin, also up massively. Doge, for you Doge holders. And Tron. Yeah. Anyhow, that's what's going on. Let's uh, let's satisfy our inner trader. Take a look at the one hour projected range. Let me do a close up so you can see what I'm talking about. So when I click on that one hour projected range, it'll just tell us like uh, what they what trade the chain thinks about is going to go up. So this is what I like about trade the chain because I don't really deal with these things because they're off my radar and that's why I really do need this type of information. So like if you're a trader, look at near protocol. It, it's a 90% accuracy. It could go up 0.5%. In the next hour, maybe up to 4%, maybe down three. The key, what else we got? Ave could go up, Harvest, Grin, Celsius. Interesting, but not too big of spreads. Today's not a really great day. All right. Well, anyhow, that's what's going on in the market. Let's jump into today's top story, shall we? And this is what we got. So 6 billion options are about to expire. How great is that? Really, it's not about the, the expiration. It's... It's about that there's very there's a lot of longs that are still in play and the shorts are diminishing. So what is going on? Well, let's just drop down here. Today is March 26th and the crypto ecosystem is about to witness one of the largest options expirations to date as more than 100,000 Bitcoin options will expire. Today happening right now, the largest ever, right? According to SKU.com, 15 billion open interest across exchanges offering Bitcoin options, 15 billion. And Dirabit, captures more than 12 billion of that in open interest. And as you can see, Glassnode detailed that there are a number of traders betting Bitcoin will be $80,000 on the April 3rd, 2020 expiration. And as it goes into some more detail down here, but kind of boring. So really all this means is this, as all these options expire and you have a lot of people going, you know what? I think that it's gonna go short or I think it's gonna go long. Well, if we take a look over here at uh, Datamish, uh, which really has a lot to do with uh, uh, BitMEX. You're going to see that uh, the shorts, you've got just a thousand of those, and then longs around 24,000. So everybody seems to agree that Bitcoin is probably going to go up in price. But here's the thing about that, and I'll just warn you right now don't get into a project just because of what everybody else is doing. It's just it's just one of those things where like, and even Warren Buffett talks about this. He says, when everybody's going in one certain direction, it's actually sometimes a good idea to kind of go the opposite. I don't know what's going to happen. I personally believe that Bitcoin will hit 150,000 this year before December 31st. I've always talked about that. I made this prediction even last year uh, on the channel, and I still think it's it's in play. I don't know if it's going to hit 80,000 by April. I hate giving these really short time frames because I know crypto and digital assets are going to be great. I just don't know the exact time frame. And uh, I mean, the best I can do is just tell you like this year, I think it's going to be this. And I could be off massively. You know, uh, I could, Bitcoin could be up to 220,000 like Max Kaiser. Or if you believe some other people, it's going to go to 300,000 or maybe a half a million. I think it's ridiculous or whatever. Uh, Pretty reserves at 150,000. I think that's where we can go. Now to say that it's going to go to 80,000 by April, that's a lot of money to dump in uh, as we're already seeing that Bitcoin, I mean, the total market cap is around 1.7 trillion. I think Bitcoin's around 950 billion or maybe a trillion of that. So to get up to 80,000 for where we are right here, that's a lot of money to be dumped in. Now, could it happen? Sure. But uh, I wouldn't uh, go all in. That's all I'm saying. Dollar cost average, I'm still going to do that. Anyhow, that's what's going on in that piece. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on to our second story of the day. So this one. So Kim.com. Kim.com, he's he was a internet pioneer, made a lot of different, uh, I think it was on file share or share something where he was like one of those gurus when he when the internet really started to really come in into light and it was a file sharing platform. And he's been around forever. And he's been a big proponent of cryptocurrency, but not so much crypto, but more recently, Bitcoin Cash. He's been talking about Bitcoin Cash for quite some time. And he has a thesis, and it makes a lot of sense. And he says, look, people don't want to pay a ton of money for transactions that are super high and are super slow. So if you look at Bitcoin, 
uh, that checks off those marks. Also, if you look at Ethereum, that's the same type of thing. I know people talk about, well, second layer solutions. We'll get to that. So this is just an interesting piece, I thought. I just bring it to your attention. So he explains how fees in the Bitcoin network are both unreliable and unsustainable for certain payments. He says this, try and buy a soda with Bitcoin. Uh, the median fee is nine bucks, 892. And Bitcoin cash median fee is 0 0.001. Pretty good. Let's be honest, right? If you want to pay for something like that, and it's, you, you can either pay nine bucks or a fraction of a penny, I think you go for a fraction of a penny. And he says, this is a statistic I've never heard of. It makes sense though. Over half of all cash payments worldwide are under 10 bucks. And Bitcoin cash is just serving the mass market. And I totally agree with him. In 2017, Bitcoin fees jumped over $50 per transaction. I don't know if you were around that time, but everybody was really getting into Bitcoin, really getting into cryptocurrency. I mean, really getting into it. That's when I got in. And uh, those transaction fees were crazy and the, and the wait time was like exorbitant. So I will not say that he is not wrong here. He's exactly right. It was crazy. And that was in 2017. Now imagine all the different things we have now, people trying to use Bitcoin to buy stuff. Oof. And then Elon Musk just said, it's a fair point. And uh, you just, you got to tip your hat and go, yeah, that's right. I mean, even Elon Musk is like, he knows a lot. I mean, he's, he knows a pretty good amount about what's going on with Bitcoin. Even he's like, you know what? It makes a lot of sense. And then people, of course, you sitting there, maybe you love Bitcoin. I like Bitcoin, but I don't think it's going to be used for payments. And people will start to talk about, well, the Lightning Network. <laughs> like every time I hear something about like, Bitcoin be used for payments. It's always Lightning Network. Well, you got to wait, Lightning Network, and then there's Lightning Network. And uh, sure, but no one's really using this for payments. No one is. So um, it just states, the guy states again, custodial solutions like Lightning are not changing our broken system. And he says, transaction fees, speed, and security matters most. That's why I prefer Bitcoin Cash. It can be both a store of value and, and electronic cash envisioned by Satoshi. And then finally, just say, say, say this, users must control the keys to the digital money, not third parties. So let me just say this. So when people, if you're new to, to the space, just realize that when Bitcoin first came out, 2009's Toshi Nakamoto white paper, it was all about using it for payments. And it was used for payments because it was pretty easy because there wasn't a lot of main, lot, not too many people were actually using it. Then when you started to get uh, network congestion, and I don't think Satoshi looked at it like this is going to be a world reserve currency. He just said, you know, let's just use this for payments amongst us. And, uh, you know, we'll see how it grows. Well, when it grows too, too much and too fast and you have these, uh, these block size limits, then it really does uh, play a part. And then all of a sudden the fees become high. The speed becomes very slow and it just becomes unusable as a payment system. That's why you hear the narrative that Bitcoin is a store of value or gold 2.0, whatever you want to call it. So in that regard, I think that is what it is going to be, a store of value. I don't see, like gold is a store of value, right? No one is using their gold bullion or their little gold nuggets and going over to Circle K and saying, hey, give me a, a cup of coffee. Here's clink. And then, you know, they pay for it with gold. It doesn't happen. It's just a store of value. And that's what Bitcoin can be. I don't think it can be used for payments. But again, I could be totally wrong. Bitcoin cash could be used for payments. Uh, I own some Bitcoin Cash. Again, super biased on this channel. Everything I talk about, it's because I'm biased. And uh, so I own a little Bitcoin Cash, I own a little bit of Bitcoin, I own a little bit of this and that. So I think, sure, why doesn't why can't Bitcoin just be the store of value and just say, we'll take that title? And why can't Bitcoin Cash just go, okay, we'll be used for payments and we'll take that title or whoever wants to you know claim that title? I just don't see the whole the whole big issue. So um that's really it for that. I just want to bring it to your attention about these are the types of things that are going on. And uh, I just see Bitcoin as store of value. Bitcoin Cash can be used for, for payments. And there's a lot of different other things to be used. Luna could be used for payments. Uh, you have XRP could be used for payments. So who's going to win that battle? Uh, I have no idea. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our last piece. So what the heck's going on with Voyager? Voyager was... It was my my big not my big pick, but it was like my my one with the most gains. Uh, when I did I did a price prediction on January seventh, and I talked about how um, Voyager at the time the BGX stock was twenty nine cents, and I said I think it can go to thirty bucks, and the reason is because of utility, and I said that you know it's only got two hundred something million for uh, the actual tokens or coins, so 
I don't think that uh, that this is too far up to go up to, you know, uh, thirty dollars per token. And it was like in like, I think it was around two hundred thirty number, right? And now we're sitting teetering between sixty and fifty. Well, since that time, it went from twenty nine cents to a dollar to three to five to seven. Then it dropped down to like four thirty. Now we're back around five dollars. So people are like, hey, what's up with your crappy pick? You just talked about Voyager because it only went up ten x. All right. So this is just the thing. Uh, and the new loyalty program came out. This is everything that has to do with the loyalty program. And I'll get to the swap in a bit. So just so you know, loyalty program, when this kicks off, we're looking around end of April, beginning of May. This is what's going to be. Different tiers. The interest is 7% for staking. You get cash back, 1x, 2x, 3x. You get your debit card. They're also going to be a credit card, which is pretty nice. The refer a friend is going to go up. Withdrawal fee savings on different tiers, 10, 20, and 30. You got an interest booster because everything that you have on Voyager. Unfortunately, it's only in the U.S. right now. It is coming into the uh, EU and Canada and New York soon, hopefully, maybe Q3. And these are all the things that you have. Interest booster, desktop, and then eligibility, which I got to tell you, 20,000 VGX tokens for the Voyager level, pretty high. It's a lot of money. So uh, I think they're going to rework that part. But the big thing was this. What the heck is going on? Well, the thing is, Voyager is a publicly traded company, and Voyager is like the Hotels.com of cryptocurrency apps. It doesn't. It's not a. It's not a, a an exchange. It actually just looks at all the different exchanges and says, which one of you ten has the best price? Okay, we'll take that best price, and then we'll charge these people the spread from from the savings we did from what they're actually going to pay, and that's it. And that's pretty much what a Hotels.com type of thing does. So. That's what they do. The problem is that they were stuck in the US and then to branch out all the different regulations and paperwork and everything else was a real pain. Steve Ehrlich, who is the CEO, he was also a uh, Voyager, was also the CEO of E-Trade, also the CEO of Lightspeed. So he knows everything from institutions to retail and how this thing all works. And he's uh, really meticulous in how he does things. So he says, you know what? Instead of us going through all this, this process, let's just buy uh, an exchange. <laughs> Which is what they did all over in France called LGO. And LGO has a token, LGO token, and uh, they're going to swap it for the Voyager token. So it's all going to be in one thing. So this swap will happen the same time the loyalty program launches, which is at the end of April, uh, maybe around May 1st or so. So here's the conversion rates, and there is some arbitrage opportunity. Uh, if you look around, you can find it. I'm not going to get into it, not financial advice, just for entertainment purposes only. You know the whole spiel. So like with this one, LGO token to Voyager at 6.7 to 1, just so you know. And then uh, the first year's interest, you're going to get 7%. The circulating supply right now is 222 million. And then uh, LGO has 33 million. And the growth pool is going to be 40, 20, and 10 over the next eight years. Okay, great. And then we're going to go from uh, a max supply of 222 to 316 million because of the interest. does not so that's great, right? Everybody's going to get paid. Everybody's happy. Loyalty program, we talked about that. And just so you know, this is the great thing. 25% token burn on token burn all Voyager uh, tokens used to pay for withdrawal fees. And everybody gets put into this program. You're going to get 7% if you have one Voyager token or a million Voyager tokens. So those holding less than 500 will be automatically enrolled in the basic level program. And then this is the cool part, swapping. So people have always asked me, like, when is this swap going to happen? When do I get into this? Well, just so you know, there's three ways to do it. If you get the Voyager app, you don't do squat. It just sits in the Voyager app and, you, and it just swaps. Great. The web swap, if you don't have the Voyager app, you got the LGO and you're in Europe, and you're stuck in Canada or New York, whatever else, you can do a web swap. They're going to make their, have the programmers doing it. You just go there and swap them out. Or it's the same thing like on the exchanges, like on a Binance, like on a wherever uh, that you can find uh, the VGX or BQX, I guess it would be, they're going to swap it on various exchanges where they're offering it. Hopefully, we'll see uh, maybe a Coinbase listing. Actually, I don't even care about Coinbase. Maybe a PayPal listing. That would be way better. And then uh, when will it take place? End of March, early April. And then community governance, uh, they're going to allow that uh, as time goes on. So we're going to be able to vote on what we want to do as far as interest rates and so on and so forth. So I will just say this, I'm not a very smart man, but in all honesty, if I have all this time 
until this loyalty program goes live, the swap happens, the desktop app happens, the credit cards, debits that are going to come out. Oh, and they're also going to be able to allow you to swap between cryptocurrencies and stocks. Uh, if I had a month to just to mess around, maybe I'd want a dollar cost average. I don't know what you're going to do, but here's what I'm doing. Every single day, I'm buying at least, it's always between $25 and $100 worth of Voyager. Every single day, I'm doing that. And it's just, I have it set up like that on the Voyager app. So um, don't follow what I do. Do your own research. I'm just one person. Look around and see what could potentially be a good choice for you and your family with all the research that you've done. And that is essentially uh, the big deal. So let me understand in the comments section. I will just finish up with this. If you, oops, wrong one. If you <laughs> have an iTrust account, uh, which is for Roth IRAs, just know that you can now put a uh, chain link into your IRA via iTrust. I personally have iTrust. Uh, it's, I've been using it for two years now, uh, since last year, I guess, not two full years. And uh, it allows you to max out your cryptocurrency without having to pay uh, uh, taxes. Speaking of taxes, just so you know, um, for Americans, uh, I believe it was May 15th or May 14th, they've extended the tax deadline. So if you're having troubles with your, your taxes, uh, go through CryptoTrader.tax is one I've been using for two years as well. And I want to thank both of these uh, <laughs> these groups for sponsoring today's video. So iTrust and CryptoTrader.tax, which I both used heavily. I believe in both of them. And you can get 20% uh, off for CryptoTrader.tax by using the link in the description. Or right underneath that, you can win an unlimited report just by putting your first name and email. Again, link in the description. And that is it for today's video. So first of all, if you like today's video, uh, please give it a thumbs up. That always helps the channel tremendously. And uh, also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive, like the things we just talked about with those options and maybe the 80,000 Bitcoin in April. And that's it for today. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.